Hello, listeners. Thank you. Thank you for always tuning in. I just wanted to do um, a section where we really get down to heartache and heartbreak. Um, The title of this session is, I love him, but he doesn't love me. Or I'm not sure about if he loves me. Now, when we think about love, you know what love feels like. You you know what it should bring to your life. But a lot of us compromise because we're afraid of being lonely. We're afraid we're getting older, we won't have anybody. I rather age by myself than put up with some of the things that I put up with in the past. What I want to say about that is when you and a lot of us are older, so we're in intimate relationships. We've been physically intimate what that does is it creates a soul tie with the person who really isn't committed to you um and when that is broken that is extremely painful when you've given your heart your trust your faith your body to someone who really doesn't love you And a lot of times we compromise our beliefs. We compromise what we said we were going to do and not going to do because that person wants us to do it. And we feel like the more if we sacrifice more, we're going to get more of them. And that's not the case. Either somebody loves you or they don't. Either somebody wants to be with you or they don't. And, and and you're going to find out later after you make the decision to walk away that you really weren't holding on to anything amazing. That maybe sometimes you being by yourself waiting for God to do some things in your life, that might be better than you just being able to brag about having a man, so to speak. I know a lady, she has been dating um, this man for 12 years and they haven't married which that's 12 years of giving somebody your body and they haven't committed to you. That's one thing you can never get back is time. You cannot redeem it. You can't go put give a debit card to someone at a, at a bank or a station and say, could you put 12 years on this? <laughs> My account is negative 12 years that I spent with this man who doesn't really want to commit. I can't afford to let somebody play Russian roulette with my heart because I'm desperate or I don't want to go through the pain of losing them. I mean, I, 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 I have too much pride. You understand? There's this guy I was dating um, when I first met him. Um, and, you know, I knew he would probably have different women. He's a very attractive guy, tall, dark skin. I mean, just everything I thought I wanted. And so not too long after going on his date with him, which I really was skeptical about doing, um, I found out he was dating somebody else and had been for five years. Now, he could have been coming out of this relationship or whatever. I don't know the real situation, but this young lady popped up while I was visiting him and she would leave. And she was very angry. And I knew then that they had invested something because if it was something new, maybe that person could have said, oh, well, but obviously this woman had given him her time and her body. And she felt like she wanted some answers. She wanted me to know she existed. And so eventually I went downstairs and I actually talked to her because I wanted to know what was going on. Now, after a few months, you know, I still had to deal with this person, you know, for work. And so it was a little hard for me to be harsh to him. So I kind of played this role until I really realized they were still in communication. He said he was sorry. You know, he was trying to get rid of her. He had proposed to her and she didn't take the proposal, but she still was sleeping with him. Now, this is how strong a a soul tie can be. You know, a relationship may not even be good for you. You know, that person doesn't really love you, but the sex is keeping y'all tied together. The sex has a strong hold on you because marriage was made for sex, meaning that bond that's created in the bedroom, you know, you think it's just the bedroom action, but it's tying your souls together. Wow. You're becoming one with somebody who is toxic, who doesn't love God, who doesn't care about your feelings, who doesn't care about your future, who's using you for your body and you know it. 
he doesn't take you out. You can't be seen with each other. He ghosts you for two weeks and three weeks at a time. Some of you are dating guys you've never even met and you still, they still are able to call you. Um, I mean, there are so many situationships. You know, you're a Christian, they're not. They're living with their baby mom. They're living with their ex-girlfriend. I mean, they're, they're married. These situations really can get murky. And because we don't know what's out there for us and we're too broken to deal with us by ourselves, and because we attach value to having a man that we don't even know that we're confused. That's a lot of trouble dealing with somebody else in their baggage. So, but we don't think that we're valuable enough. I beg to differ. I challenge you to move yourself out of a situation that might cause you grief, but it's going to bless you later on in your life. But if you won't give yourself the time to grieve the relationship and step away from it, because it's going to rip you apart. It is. It's going to hurt. It is. I'm not denying that. I'm not denying when I stepped away that things hurt me. But when you see the writing on the wall, can you really live with yourself Turn a blind eye to the truth and be okay? I was never able to do that. And and it's caused me some friendships because I just didn't understand how my friends stayed in situations that I just couldn't imagine staying in. I haven't had the best track record, but I just don't do pain for long. You might need that person financially, but God has a way a blessing us when we put our faith in him. You don't really need them the way you think you do. God could bless you amazingly above what you even anticipate, but you won't wait. You won't. He's not going to do it while you're in the situation. He he will give you grace. He will bless you, but he will you will not be able to walk fully in the blessing that he has planned for you if you're holding on to something you know is wrong for your life. It's hard for us. We're all in different stages of a relationship, but you've got to come to the point where you can admit that this isn't it. You've got to not tell yourself, I don't really want to get married. I can wait because you've been dating 12 years. Wow. So you've adjusted your standards and your expectation because this person is good to you. They're not committed to you. Commitment without marriage is not really commitment. Anything beyond five years and y'all still dating, you might want to hang it up. You might want to walk away to challenge him to say, you know what? I deserve better. This might be good, but I deserve better. And you know what? One thing you can't, you can really tell when a woman is, is settling. You can look at it. You can see it on her face. You can see it by the way she dresses. You can tell. You don't want your emotions to be based on how he feels about you that day, that week. Men have a lot of power. They have a lot of strength. And they use it for their advantage. They use our weaknesses. They know that women are needy. I know this guy, and I felt really bad for the girl. I know this guy was dating one time, and we had met back up on Instagram, and I went to see him, and I was scared to go see him because it was kind of weird. You know, I didn't know. And and God let that feeling come on me for a reason. And so this was a while ago, and I pulled up, and I spent the night, and I hung out with him, and, and somebody he was dating before me popped up and and walked into his house they had the code to his alarm and so um they were able to get in and code to the lock and so this girl was telling him to tell me to go home and and he said we've been through this we've been through this and i remember when he told me that he didn't care women will put up with anything and i said i wonder why he say that and so when she came over, and mind you, I'm just sitting there looking because I wasn't going nowhere. I wasn't going nowhere because she said it. I, after, after she left, I realized that was not something I was going to deal with. And I realized that this whole nut was going to, you know, continue. Like after I came in on you and saw you with another woman, I probably wouldn't have wanted to claim you anymore. 
And this was not her first time. And every time she do some damage to the woman's vehicle. So she, she slit my tires. And that told me that I would never enter into a situation with him because he wasn't going to protect me. He didn't care about his own life, dating somebody that was that violent, right? So I began to feel sorry for the girl because I'm like, there's other people out there. But that soul tie situation, when you have that and you've been rejected by someone, oh, you don't want to let it go. You want to fight. You end up looking like a fool. And the man still does what he wants to do. He still creeps around. He still sleeps with who he wants to sleep with. And you sitting up there trying to fight other women to keep him. God bless your soul. God bless your soul. One thing I believe in is getting real with yourself. Getting real with the man in the mirror. You cannot continue to be with someone who doesn't love you. You will never get them to love you. You've already tried. He still hasn't changed. He's not going to change. People don't really change unless they meet Christ. They don't change on their own. They don't just want to wake up and be a different person. Not if they're getting all the things that they they want on their own. Not if they're getting all the sex that they want from different women. They've got to hit rock bottom. Most of the time before they can make a change, you being with you is just proof that they can keep being a fool because you've forgiven so much. You one lady told me I love him unconditionally. How can you love him unconditionally? And he's constantly paraded women in your face. Society has told us that we're a ride or die when we when we hang out and when we when we you know, ride with our men. Who does that? Who does that? Who who really does that? And you mean to tell me you think you think it's a, a honor to ride out and wait on a man to finally choose you? He's not. He knows you don't respect yourself. He knows you don't respect yourself. You have proven to him that you don't. Now, I wonder, am I too hard on people? So a lot of times when people tell me things, I just, I ask them a question. And I I say that after a while, it's not the man's fault. Think about that. If you know what kind of man you got and you keep putting up with it, it's not his fault anymore. It's your fault. He can only do what you allow him to do. You can't beg somebody to stop abusing you when you keep staying. That's stupidity. It's stupidity. And it's got to be some part of you that likes it. It's got to be some part of you that still wants that validation. It's got to be some part of you that doesn't love you enough to say, I am done. Walking away with tears in your eyes. But with your dignity intact. I don't want nobody that don't want me. Come on now, say it. I don't want nobody that don't want me. I'm worthy of more. They're not worthy of you. And that's what you got to flip that thing around. You got to tell yourself, yeah, this ain't this ain't what it's cracked up to be. This ain't what you think it is. You understand? You're going to cry. You're going to cry. You're going to miss him. But guess what? You ain't going to regret the decision you made. Because he's going to go on and do somebody else like trash and treat him like dirt. And is he's going to grow old without a wife, without somebody to love him. And he's going to remember how good you were. And just because he comes back doesn't mean he deserves a second chance. Trust me, if he goes through hell without you, let him. Let him. He had the opportunity. He had the opportunity. See, I can only hold out hope for so long. When there's no manifestation, when there's no proof in the pudding that this thing going to get better, because the more you let him in, the more you forgive him, the more he's going to get away with, the more he know he can get away with. Men know that, you know, it's not so many good ones out there. They know that they juggling different women and they know this is the point now with the women know that they got other women. And instead of holding the man accountable, the women are fighting each other. I really, 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 really hope this works for you. I remember one girl told me she couldn't be my friend no more. Her husband was throwing up against the wall. 
He wouldn't have sex with her. He was jacking off looking at porn. And and he, he treated her like he couldn't stand her. And she was crying every day, calling this pastor, asking them, when God say I can get out of my marriage. And I was sick of it. I was sick of hearing it. Because I was like, you. why do you need permission from anybody? Because they prophesied to you at church and told you that your marriage was going to be a testimony after all this abuse. That's stupidity. A dog after you kick them so many times is going to bite you. I don't understand how women don't have the, dign- ain't the, the raging indignation to say this is enough. It's either going to be me or you. And I don't plan on dying no time soon. So it's going to be you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a fighter. I'm a survivor. Ain't nobody going to take me down like that. And I know they doing it. See, when I don't know, that's different. Why is he with you if he won't treat you good? Maybe he needs somewhere to stay. <laughs> Maybe he liked the fact that he can split bills with you and y'all really roommates. Y'all not engaged. Y'all not getting married no time soon if you're giving him everything he can, he can get. Now, there are legit situations where people are living together and they're, you know, engaged to be married and they might get there. I don't I don't chance it for me. I've had that happen. My ex-husband, he telling me about my exes and he letting his ex take him to the to the dealership. I was wondering where he was going one day because I dropped him off and I went to work and he said he was going to get there. And come to find out, this girl found out what church he was going to, came up there. We were married at that time. We had got married and she telling all the business. And she's raging, angry, and mad and sad because he was living with her, sleeping with her, in and out of her kid's life. And when he met me and I put some standards on it, he had to marry me. But he still wasn't no good. And after I found out that he was still in contact with her, when we were engaged, I didn't trust him no more. And the love left. I, I just couldn't do it. You holding me to all these standards telling me I'm creeping, but you the one doing it. You the one was, you know... God forbid I talked to one of my exes, which I wasn't doing because I was trying to do the right thing. You you going behind my back. Got this girl taking you to the get a new car that I'm riding in. Either way, that was disrespectful. She was your quote-unquote roommate. Y'all was sleeping together. But at the same time, you know, I know women say, oh, they ain't going to leave their wife. But wives take a little too much. I wasn't about to take all that. I wasn't. I wasn't. Mm-mm. Our relationship was built on lies. And I realized it. And when I did, I did something about it. I, matter of fact, it was a whole lot of other stuff we were going through. So when I when he realized he couldn't disrespect me verbally, I put him out and he divorced me. Mm-hmm. You ain't hurt me. You ain't did nothing but bless me. God blessed me with a nice house after that, a good paying job, and Lord have mercy. He's still writing my story. Did it hurt? Yeah, it did. But I love me. Trust it. Trust it. I love me. I pray that you love you. I pray that you stop lying to yourself. See, the, the, the hard part is, it's just like Jesus asked the man, and, and you know, um, do you at the, at the pool, take up your man and walk? Before he healed, people say, do you want to be well? You know, don't come to me. That's, and I, sometimes I ask people that, you know, you don't want to be made whole. Just don't come to me. You ain't ready yet. And I don't know what else to say. I've been through some of the same situations. I'm not. If you if you still like what you're doing, don't talk to me. You got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. Then you talk to somebody. Because people tell you their business and then they'll end up taking up for the joke. And you like, hey, I thought you just said, what? My close associations are not people. That are, that are in situations that they should not be. Because I can't afford to think that that's okay. I can't afford to run with people like that. Because I'll start doing it. But I'm used to being put on a pedestal. I'm used to men really making me feel some type of way. So when I meet people and they don't do that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what else to do but walk away. If I'm not number one and the one. I'm nothing. Absolutely. I'm nothing. I'm nothing. And you would never get bold enough to tell me about another woman and I'm supposed to be okay with it. Yeah, I'm walking away. I'm walking away from my sanity. I'm walking away to keep myself out of jail. And I hurt another woman hurting you. 
But see, that doesn't help me. So I'm just wondering, what, when it, when it, what, how much are you going to take before you can say, I'm done? Why are men so important to us? Why do we idolize them? When God is our maker and our creator, and he can provide us with peace and love and joy that we're looking for. Most of us are looking for love, but we're looking for it in the wrong places. We're looking for it in the wrong places. And since I can relate, I can relate. I can relate. But you can walk away. You can. Don't settle. Don't settle. Don't you get to be 40 and 50 and you still sleeping with somebody that won't give you a ring? Don't do it. Don't do it. What you what, the, what they gonna say at his funeral? This was his girlfriend of 20 years. That ain't no badge of honor. You don't get his insurance. You don't get his veteran benefits. You don't get nothing. Unless he wills it to you, but you're not obligated to stay. Ain't they, the state gonna give it to his kids. If he has any. Or as, or as near as relative, but it won't be you if you're not married. So we've got to secure ourselves. We really got to think about our lives and know that your body belongs to God. Christ died for it. Oh, yeah, he loved you enough to die for you. He saw your worth and died for you. And this man won't even speak to you in the morning. He won't even come in and say, hey, hey, babe, when you're sick, he don't care. Wow. And all you can do is try to make him happy because he's the female and you the breadwinner. Or he's the breadwinner, but barely it's because he, you know, y'all just unsettled in and y'all in y'all comfort zone. But it's because you you can't do no better. You know, you know him. You, you're, you're safe. Even though it's painful, it's safe. Wow. I pray that God wakes you up. I pray that he gives you the strength to walk away. And, and know that you're going to cry sometime, but that's life. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Know you're doing yourself a favor. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Yeah. Yeah. And I know I'm, I, I, I'm not saying other women don't have strength, but I'm different in the respect that my mom was very strong and I had men in my life my stepdad, my dad, they, they, they encouraged me and let me know I'm worth more. I'm worth more than that. I'm worth more. You are worth more than that to God. You're worth more. Why does God matter? No, God can't come down here. He, he can, but he's not coming down here and laying in bed with you. But I tell you one thing, you won't miss it. He'll make sure your bills are paid every month. He'll do a lot more for you. And you won't have to wake up wondering how he's feeling about you today. He won't have to, you won't have to wake up running. Is he going to slap you on the floor today? But maybe he's not beating you. He's beating you emotionally. You got to worry. You're going down there to get butt injections to compete with these women with big butts. It don't matter what size your butt is. As long as your coochie open, he want to hit it. And some of us are dealing with liars and we know it. I'm done. Because it, it it brings up some stuff, you know, and, and once I realize I'm being played, I, I can't, I, I'm not nice. I'm not, I'm not nice. So I pray for your strength and God, any woman that's listening to me who knows they're in an abusive relationship, I pray that you help them to overcome. And if they can't walk away on their own, give them the tools and the resources and the people to help them get to where they need to be. Everybody does not have that inner strength. I pray that they pray to you more to gain it and that they are willing to accept the things that they cannot change and gain the courage to accept the things that they can and the wisdom to know the difference. Let them do it for their kids. Let them do it for their future. And I know that you're able to do all these things because your son died for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Sister, I know that I know God is with you. He knows the plans he has for you, Jeremiah 29, 11. They are great not to harm you, but to prosper you, to give you a future and a hope. Be blessed.